I just saw My Hero Academia World Heroes Mission, the third My Hero Academia movie to be released. And I was originally going to make this video just as like a review of me talking off the dome about what I liked and didn't like about the movie. But as I was thinking about it, I realized, man, there's a bigger issue here. And so I decided to put a bit more effort into this and really make it into a video instead of just me talking. Well, I guess it'll still just be me talking, but it'll be me talking about more than just like my opinion. So without further ado, here's the big problem with the My Hero Academia movies. Let's start off at movie number one. My Hero Academia 2 Heroes, released on August 3rd of 2018. You get to see people from All Might's past, another quirkless character, everyone having fun, and a cool fight where All Might and Deku team up to take out the big bad. What's there not to like? Well, honestly, not much. It wasn't bad, wasn't good. It was just nice animation, cool fight. There we go. Normally, I wouldn't mind the extra content, especially when it has such stellar animation. But the problem comes in, when this stellar animation only exists at the price of reducing the main anime's quality. Season 3 of My Hero Academia was a big time for the show. It was just coming off its biggest popularity boost after the sports festival and hero killer arc, also known as Season 2, and it did well with that boost at the start with the forest training camp and All Might's final battle. But the same can't be said for the provisional license exam arc when the animation quality dropped significantly, so much so that even I, a young little boy blinded by my love for the show, was able to realize that it was significantly worse. In this case, I didn't really mind. I didn't give a shit about this arc when I read it in the manga, and I didn't care about it now that it was in the anime. And I was, I, saw, I was like, all right, you know, we got a cool movie. Although it did cost us the animation for this one arc, it's fine. There were still nice moments in that arc in terms of animation. And it, it, was, it, was, it was all, didn't it didn't matter to me much. And thankfully, the quality went back up for Deku vs Bakugo 2 and Mirio's introduction. So it didn't really matter. Then comes Season 4, the overhaul arc, and along with it, My Hero Academia's second movie, Gru's Rising. In terms of Season 4, the hype was like through the roof. Every manga reader was gassing this season up like there was no tomorrow. And due to the extended wait for it, everyone was pretty much foaming at the mouth, just waiting, pleading, please release it, hurry. Just like Season 3, Season 4 started off great, and honestly, stayed that way throughout the entire overhaul arc, or should I say most of the overhaul arc, because... That Lamillion fight, it, it was sad. The, the Lamillion fight was the one I was looking forward to most, and it was just, it got butchered. <laughs> it didn't get butchered, but it got done so dirty. I was expecting 10 minutes of raw fighting. <laughs> uh, but instead, we got a slideshow, and I think that already left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, just because I think everyone was looking forward to that fight a lot. But hey, you know, one fight for the movie it's all right you know we can deal with that we got a whole nother arc to go through and the overhaul arc didn't seem as heavily affected at, by the movie as season three did so maybe we're all good and my dream of seeing deku versus gentle in a crisp sakuga filled fight will come true Eh, kinda the fight was mediocre at best there was no sakuga and instead of gentle's love power up looking like ultra instinct but pink it looked like ultra instinky hat get it because like stinky poo poo anyways i was really <laughs> disappointed by this fight especially after seeing how well 100 deku was done and knowing gentle could have gotten that same treatment just imagine like 100 gentle what 100 deku but pink and with like hearts coming out because you know the, the smoke makes hearts thankfully the animation that cost mirio and gentle's fights was used on a one for all bakugo and a great movie so it was worth it in the end, in my opinion. And the second movie was also supposedly the last, or so I thought. So I, I was like, well, we don't have to worry about any more of these. We got a great movie, and only two fights got kind of ruined. That's fine, we're, we're chilling. Psych, My Hero Academia 3, World Heroes Mission, baby. Let's go! We're going worldwide, baby! Is what I would say, if not for the track record of the movies significantly fisting the main seasons. The season was hyped up to be the best of the best, and personally, I agreed. When season 4 was getting hyped, I didn't really understand it, I was like, they're all chatting. I thought the overhaul arc was decent, I didn't think it was the best arc in the series or anything, I never saw what everyone else saw in it, but I knew the My Villain Academia arc was top tier, and I also had hope, just glimmering hope, that with the right animation and a bit of fixed up pacing, the joint training arc could be something that rivals the sports festival. Sadly, the movie had a different idea. The season started off with a filler episode, which was no biggie, since that's the case for every other season, I literally did not care. I think some people were mad about that for some reason, but I didn't mind it. And as far as filler episodes go, it was pretty enjoyable, more enjoyable than the swimming race. But then here we go, the joint training arc. 
Despite being blinded by my love and bias towards the series, I could still tell how drawn out the arc was. Like, I remember watching it week by week and I was like, it's, this is not what I was hoping it would be. I was expecting like one episode per fight, maybe like 1.5 if they wanted to pad it up with like extra fighting. Uh, but we ended up with like two episodes per fight, resulting in this arc taking up 10 out of 25 episodes in the season. Which is honestly like double what it needed, but I understood. You know, they, they don't they don't want to end in the middle of the war arc or something. They don't want to end in a bad place, so they got to pad this one a bit, and then they can end at a good place, right? Maybe they just don't have enough content, so they got to fill it up a bit. And it's not like the animation was lacking throughout the arc. It was fantastic. The Bakugo blowing up the lizard man, and then the, the explosion spelling out boom for like a millisecond. That was great. And the, the Sakugo was fantastic. It was, it was a great arc uh bar the pacing but you know some things you just gotta it's just how it is but now we're on to the big boy the my villain academia arc psych they switched that shit around baby let's go this was undoubtedly the second worst thing that they could that they did because of the movie it, it's just it was outrageous like my hero usually follows a general formula where they go from hero school stuff and then they go to hero villain stuff and then they go to hero school stuff and then hero villain stuff and it keeps it refreshing you know they switch it up so that it doesn't get la it doesn't get boring like maybe some people don't like the school stuff as much they only have to sit through one arc and then they get villain stuff so it's all good they completely just sh absolutely shagged that though they they ruined they switched it up you know just gave us the end of war hero agency arc which was also a lot longer than it needed to be but once again at this point, I wasn't really caring about the pacing because I figured season six has to line up with the beginning of the war arc, so it, it's fine. And albeit it wasn't that stretched, it was just like, eh. They turned 11 chapters into five episodes, which is a decent pace, but the 11 chapters weren't necessarily filled with like the most stuff, you know? Could have been faster, but the real problem of the arc switch comes with it basically like completely spoiling the results of My Villain Academia. It shows like Shigaraki and Reed Destro just chilling which anyone with a brain assumes that they would, had teamed up or something. And it even shows that Toga's alive, which was like one of the biggest parts of the arc was like, oh, is Toga going to survive or is she going to die? I mean, it's kind of obvious. You would assume that she survives, but still having that like thought is like, yeah. Now I am a long reader, so I obviously knew she would survive already. And I can't speak for anime only if they even thought she would die. Well, they didn't think she would die because they saw her, but you know. What boggles my mind the most of all with this is that this is all just so that the movie makes sense chronologically for the people viewing it. But they didn't do that for the second one. The second one spoiled that he had multiple quirks, did it not? Like, the second one was based in the manga. Like, it was in a manga timeline. I'm pretty sure it was post Endivore versus the Nomu. So, I don't know why they decided to change it this time and not last time. It was just weird. But hey, the arc was good, obviously. Uh, and now we get to see MVA. Psych again, baby. Another filler episode. It just wasn't good. It was like, it was once again for the movie. So it's like, bruh, we just didn't need to see it. They, they brought in fucking Selkie or whatever her name is in the seal guy again. It was just like, bruh, come on, man. I didn't need to want, I didn't need to see it. As simple as that. It didn't need to exist to take up space. But hey, you know, like I said, as long as it lines up so that the war arc starts, in season six it's all good and hey now we're, we're finally here mva my villain academia really hope that the final battle has at least a decent amount of sakuga and they don't cut out an entire chapter of setup you would think that's not much to ask for right well too bad <laughs> it is this whole arc gets treated the same as the license exam except kind of worse honestly it has so many still frames you'd think it was a powerpoint honestly even the first instance of shigaraki's quirk awakening was made into a still frame and so was twice as sad man's parade and this shit turned into this shit the only part of this arc that was actually done justice was when shigaraki was like let it all be destroyed and then disintegrated all of daika city you know like the smoke like there's like the the smoke around it and the background's all purple it's in my outro but yeah that's the best part of this whole arc and that's saying a lot considering I thought it would be, I thought it would be when all that black stuff is around him, the, the shit that turned into that shit. And they also changed his hair color at a different time. It's like they just weren't even trying with this arc and it was really disappointing. But the worst part of all was the cut content. All throughout this season and all throughout this video, I've been telling you guys about how I thought the padded arcs and extra filler were because they didn't have enough content to fill the season and ended off at the very start of the war arc. 
but they they literally cut out pretty much all the important information for the start of the arc like what the league was up to since we last saw them and how they were living on scraps it cut out the creature rejection clan which gave us important world building that people were discriminatory towards the heteromorph quirks and becomes kind of important later on it also cut out spinner's like whole inner monologue about how he's like not sure how the about the league and how he feels being in there and how like there's no sign of stain and unless i just forgot about it or something i'm pretty sure they cut out Redestro's like whole introduction which left him lacking the funny businessman character he had in the manga you know with like the the bear guy being like hey your hairline's fucked and then he like kills him because he doesn't accept the ideology the season left me feeling absolutely deflated it was the most disappointing season by far but there was still hope in my heart that this meant that the new movie would be a 10 out of 10 flawless masterpiece flash forward to today i was walking into the theater thinking to myself this movie has to be good it has to be they ruined mva for it it has to be and then flash forward to me now writing this script disappointed the movie was decent, it had nice animation, with Deku swinging around like Spider-Man, Rhodey running around and staying center frame, and Deku going what seemed to be 100% and punching so fast that he like cloned himself, like that part was nuts. Like, I'm, I'm just gonna talk about that part for a second. The way that like his eyes just go like all white, and he, you can tell they beefed him up for that. Like, they made him significantly hencher. That fool was on roids in that very moment. Like, it was nuts. Like, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull this thing up. Like, yeah, you, look at this. You get all the, like, the bajillion punches. They've done that for the overall fight. But it, they just did it so well. How it's, like, going slow-mo and then super fast. And, like, and then it just speeds up. And he's just punching one quadrillion times. The part where he's just kind of standing there doing it looks kind of goofy, but he's like turned into a human turret. He's gone gumu gumu no gaddling, and it's just, it's nuts. This part they did really well. The fight, it wasn't bad. Like it had Sakuga, the animation was great, the choreography was great. But when it comes to Fleck turns power, there's only so much that you can do. It's just Deku hitting him and then bouncing off. And then, but yeah, then that final part where Deku turns into a human gatling gun, that part's sick. Like I, I really enjoyed that part. And Bakugo, obviously everything Bakugo's in is just good. Cause he's just the best character in My Hero Academia and the second best character in all of anime. Like those parts were all very cool. And I did enjoy them, but those were very small parts of the movie, and in no way made up for the lack of story, lack of characters, and lack of anything that the trailer led on. We see the heroes from other countries like twice, and we don't get much of the class other than the main three. The focus of this movie is all on Deku and Rhodey developing a bond, which I thought was pretty dumb considering he's a filler character and we're never going to see him again. The villains were also extremely lackluster. Two of them were just like basically fighting machines, they had the most boring personalities. One of them didn't even have a personality, it was just screaming the whole time. The other two were like luck, but without any charm, they were just like, ha huh. That's literally all they did, they just laughed while they fought, it was just dumb. The main villain stunk. His quirk was literally just to reflect things, which isn't cool, and it doesn't make for an interesting fight. And his whole reasoning was shoddy at best, saying that he, he was mad that he reflected everyone away, like, oh, even their feelings get reflected towards them and they can't handle it, Arr. and then Deku was like, it's because you gave up, but yeah, it was just, eh, it was just not good. Compared to the double one-for-all battle with Deku and Bakugo versus Nine, who is basically all for one junior, this fight was mediocre at best, and the movie in general also paled in comparison to the second one. Like, how do you go from what the ending was originally supposed to be to that to to reflection blue man fighting deku like it just wasn't good double one for all to just nothing really that special like this is even worse than the first one with because at least that one had all my deku team up this one just had deku like and then like cool animation for a few seconds and then it was done and also roadie's quirk sucked ass it was so stupid it just didn't need to be in there at all they could have made it something any way better anyways to summarize it all up the first movie was decent, but it took away from the examination arc, which I didn't mind because the arc was boring anyway. The second movie was fantastic, but it took away from the two things I was looking forward to the most, so that sucked. But still, the movie was fantastic, so overcome net equal. The third movie though, the third movie was just mediocre, and it shouldn't have been created, and it also completely fucked what could have been the best season in all of My Hero Academia. So it comes out at a net negative, I truly hope that they just end it here with the movies and they just put all of their money and, and resources and everything into this next season. Because if they do it right, this next season, it'll be something that shakes the anime community more than anything we've seen since the ending of Naruto. And I think it should be the same going forward even after the next season because the stuff that we've been getting in the manga all deserves top tier animation that's not hindered by anything else. And I don't want this video to come off like me just hating on my hero i love it it's my third favorite anime 
third favorite manga. No, probably my second favorite manga. And I really want it to do well. So this is just me being like, this is coming from a fan, a true fan. I own all the manga volumes, so you can't say anything about me not being a true fan. I've watched all the movies, even the OVAs with the zombie guy. I really liked the second movie. I really did. Uh, but this third one, it just shouldn't have been made. It just compared to the second one, it was completely lackluster. It was completely boring and like... It just seemed like a massive cash grab. They didn't even go worldwide. They went to a fake country. Anyways, pray for my hero season six. I'll see y'all in the next one. Deuces. Leave him crying, leave him lonely like my papa I don't wanna be a doctor, I don't wanna be a lawyer I just wanna be important, put my face on maps Everybody know me cause the motherfucker raps Deal with the devil, deal with the devil, leave with the devil I am the devil, I need the devil, you need the devil Who you think you talking to, you talking to the best they never knew No crew, never had a click, no gang Living by myself, never been no thing Never need a bitch, never needed a woman I never needed anybody but a pen in my bullet I can't deal with the lows that'll come in the future If I blow up then it was good to know you A guy like me can't deal with fame When he hit his verse then remember my name